Thank you so much for coming. I can't tell you how excited I am to see all these faces. My name is Tara Beard. I'm a housing policy analyst at the Metropolitan Council. And the idea for this workshop is over a year and a half old. It's been a little seed that I've been trying to um, cultivate and uh, water and pitch and um, bring along folks um, to really address this issue that I see essentially as an issue of opportunity. Um, whether folks realize it or not, we have some of the most innovative, established, successful community land trusts, cooperative housing models, manufactured home preservation models, um, and uh, limited equity shared, uh, uh, limited equity uh, home ownership opportunities in the country. But um, the bigger story, as is often the case in the metro here, and that's my privilege to get to think about these things from the seven county perspective versus individual counties or individual cities, is that, that the coverage of those opportunities, of those tools, of those resources are fairly spotty. And we've got some great maps in the back that I hope you'll take a look at to kind of show that. And so this is a workshop about opportunity. We have these great Great resources. We have these great experts, um, innovators, trailblazers, um, models uh, for affordable home ownership. And um, my hope is that this will spark something that leads to a broader, bigger um, uh, utilization of those, those tools. So if you're here, um, I think I can assume that affordable home ownership is something that you value and you think is important. But um, I have to get on my soapbox and tell you a little bit about why I'm so passionate about these affordable homeownership strategies and models and why, why I hope you are too. Um, you know, I've been in community development and housing work for about 15 years in the metro and it is noticeable to me how much more the affordable housing conversation centers around rental multifamily housing. And I get that and I get why. Um, and that's a super, super important thing. Um, but we really have to talk more about affordable home ownership. Um, you know, uh, over the past seven years, Minnesota Housing has invested almost 25 times more funding to multifamily projects than to single family projects. And I'm not throwing Minnesota Housing under the bus. At, at the Metropolitan Council, how do we, how do we count cities um, addressing their affordable housing need through high density residential land guidance? So um, this, is, this is an issue that I think we all need to work together to kind of um, talk about more openly and be sure that we're, we're putting resources where, where our values are. Um, so, so here I'm going to talk a little bit more about why affordable homeownership is such an important part of the solution to the huge uh, problems and challenges we have for affordable housing in our region, and I know all of you are aware of that. Um, as I said before, there's huge parts of the region that are and will continue to be single-family neighborhoods. That's just a fact. So if we are relying on affordable, high-dense rental housing to solve our housing, uh, affordable housing needs, we're going to be missing huge swaths of the region, huge parts of the region um, that uh, maybe even entire cities um, that aren't providing any uh, affordable housing within a range of incomes. Um, the, the other key about affordable housing ship, uh, affordable home ownership is that it can build wealth in a way that rental just can't. Um, the benefits of affordable home ownership go beyond having an affordable housing payment. They can create access to equity and wealth and housing stability, and that doesn't just benefit one household, it can benefit generations. Um, affordable home ownership, at least in the models we're going to talk about today, can be affordable in perpetuity. That's also unique to affordable home ownership in a way that isn't to affordable multifamily rental. I'm not aware of any affordable um, multifamily rental that is affordable in perpetuity. Even when we think about, you know, um, public housing, um, you know, we know that public housing is under attack. It's getting demolished. It's getting converted. It's losing funding every year. So um, really, that's the only arguable source of per perpetual affordable rental housing. Um, and that's also under threat. So um, the models you, you hear about today uh, maintain their affordability resale after resale, and they leverage those initial subsidies in a way that affordable rental can't. Uh, affordable home ownership has a tremendous potential to make a difference in our region's racial disparities, uh, not just for home ownership rates, but for wealth creation as well. Um, we are um, seeing that these models of affordable home ownership are serving households of color at a much, much higher rate than our traditional um, uh, mortgage products and home ownership models in our region and in the state. Um, and affordable home ownership is for more than moderate income households. That's a bit of a myth I'd like to bust today. Um, there are plenty of low and very low income households that have what it takes to own and maintain their homes. There are thousands in our region that already do. 
Um, and for folks with criminal records or other types of barriers, home ownership can be actually a better option than rental. So um, it's a really, uh, I, I think that affordable home ownership has uh, been given sort of a tunnel vision of one way it can help and one problem it can solve, and, and that's a myth I'm trying to bust today. Um, and finally, you know, home prices are high, but they're not as high as they're going to be, and they're not as high as they are in our peer regions across the country. So uh, we literally can't do better than we can today by shuffling our, re by moving our resources towards creating these in perpetuity affordable uh, uh, home opportunities um, for home ownership. Um, you know, talking with Jeff Washburn with the City of Lakes Community Land Trust, which you may or may not know is the third largest land trust in the country. Um, you know, we were talking about Edina and the Homes Within Reach land trust that serves West Hennepin um, suburbs and how Edina is one of the most cost prohibitive communities for affordable housing we have in our metro. And they have, I don't know if, I haven't seen Janet yet, um, but Janet Limbo is the executive director of uh, Homes Within Reach, but I think Edina has about 12 uh, community land trust homes. Um, 12 homes that are uh, in perpetual affordability for the city of Edina. And they didn't do it all at once. They did it a couple houses a year over time. Few resources here, few resources there. Um, and so this can be done. This can be done in any community in our region as far as I'm concerned. So thank you for listening to my um, passionate plea about why affordable home ownership needs uh, a second look, a stronger advocacy, and a little bit more um, uh, stretch into some of the really successful models we have here in the region to expand them to the parts of the region that don't have them so far.